Russian soldiers can't take it. Many Russian soldiers surrender. As you may remember from our map reports, there are many different regions where the Ukrainian army is conducting operational activities at the same time as part of its counteroffensive. One of these areas is undoubtedly the city of Bakhmut, which has been on the world agenda since the first days of the war. The results of the Ukrainian army's efforts to encircle the city have started to emerge. Russian troops deployed in the region cannot withstand the Ukrainian army's counterattack. A report that attracted a lot of attention in recent days was shared by local Ukrainian sources on Telegram. It is claimed that many Russian troops stationed in Bakhmut line could no longer resist and decided to surrender to Ukrainian troops. So what are the details of this incident? What is happening in Bakhmut? Let's take a look at the latest developments. For more information about the Russia-Ukraine war, you can subscribe to our Pioneer channel, turn on notifications and like our videos to help us reach more people. Let's start if you are ready. The Pioneer reports. The Ukrainian army's counteroffensive on the Bakhmut line continues unabated. Ukrainian troops have made a significant progress, especially in the operation on the northern and southern line to encircle the city. It is estimated that the city will soon be completely under the siege of the Ukrainian army. Of course, there are many different factors affecting the situation. The most important factor is, of course, the fact that Wagner forces has stopped operating in Bakhmut. With Wagner's departure from the region, the Russian troops stationed in the region suffered a great weaknesses. We knew that Wagner troops were most heavily concentrated in Klishchivka region, and with group's departure, the true potential of the Russian troops was revealed. Recently, a group known as Bakhmut Demons Group, which took an active part in the siege of Bakhmut, shared a very remarkable information with the subscribers via its Telegram channel. According to the group, the latest developments in the region have the effect of both prestige and the significant loss of power on the front line for Russia. The statement in question is as follows. Part of the paratroopers near Skolishchivka surrendered in the past hours. There are still Russian troops who have communication problems and are not aware that a large part of the units have surrendered. So we will soon inform the Russian troops in the area and they will be told to surrender or their lives will be in danger. With this situation, we think it is possible to say that the immediate operational situation in Bakhmut has largely turned against Russia. There are numerous reports that the Ukrainian army will launch a heavier offensive in Bakhmut line in the coming days. Bakhmut will remain one of the main agenda items of the Russia-Ukraine war. The number of soldiers surrendering in the Russian army is increasing day by day. Recently, another Russian soldier surrendered to the Ukrainian troops in the Bakhmut countryside. The footage of the soldiers' surrender was shared by millions of people on social media. These images were quite remarkable. In the footage in question, it is seen that Russian soldiers escaped from his position during the ongoing trench clashes in Bakhmut. In the footage recorded by an unmanned aerial vehicle, the Russian soldiers first approaches the unmanned aerial vehicle. The footage shows that the Russian soldiers named Antin standing up without his rifle and raising his hands to surrender. He uses hand gestures to beg the Ukrainian pilots to spare his life if he surrenders. According to Anatin, he was Wagner employee. Like many Russian soldiers, the Russian soldiers in his unit were frightened by the increasing pressure from Ukraine in recent days. Many wanted to surrender, but their commanders threatened them. If you even think of retreating, you will die. The troops in the area realized that they would not survive the increasing mortar fire. They repeatedly contacted their commanders and told them that if they did not withdraw, all of the troops in the area will be destroyed. However, the commanders did not take this assessment seriously. To the Wagner militia and Russian soldiers in the area, it was a meat grinder that the Russian commanders were happy to throw their soldiers into it. Anitin was the only survivor of his unit. He was also one of the soldiers who insisted the most on the withdrawing from the area. He was afraid that his commanders would kill him if he retreated. He had previously witnessed the statements of the Russian soldiers who had surrendered. Anitin therefore saw surrendering to the Ukrainian army as his only chance of survival. In fact, the mission of the unmanned aerial vehicle was to completely destroy the Russian position in the area. However, the pilot of the unmanned aerial vehicle noticed an anomaly in Anitin's behavior. Anitin did not look aggressive. With hands gestures, Anitin showed that he wanted to surrender, but there was a problem.
the unmanned aerial vehicle commanded Anitin to follow the drone. Anitin dropped all his equipments and started to follow the unmanned aerial vehicle. It was a long and difficult journey. The pilot of the unmanned aerial vehicles following Anitin was struggling hard to ensure that there were no problems on his route. If Anitin came across any Russian troops in the area, it would mean his death. Anitin was moving through our trenches with Ukrainian troops were launching intense attacks. During this journey, Anitin took the water canteens of dying Russian soldiers and made use of their food rations. After a long journey, Anitin was captured by the Ukrainian troops. After the surrender by the Ukrainian troops, Anitin was sent to PAW camp. Ukrainian personnel provided Anitin with all his humanitarian needs. The Ukrainian drone pilot, codenamed Boxer, who was in charge of the rescue operation, said about him. Even though he is the enemy, even though he killed our children, I still feel sorry for him. He is just a victim. We are fighting to the end this war so that no more people become victims. Anitin's statements after his surrender were also on the agenda. Anitin was treated in a way he never expected. He had been taught that the Ukrainians were barbaric and savage. However, Ukrainian soldiers treated him with a gentle manliness he had never seen in his own army. Anitin also talk about what he will do after the war is over. Great danger awaits me in my country, but it is my home, my home. Let them put me in prison. I want to go home to my family and never experience the kind of things I saw during the war. No Russian should see this. The war must end as soon as possible. As you can see, the number of soldiers from the Russian army giving up the war and surrendering to Ukrainian troops is growing every day. Ukrainian authorities claim that its so-called counteroffensive is just the beginning. The number of these surrendered soldiers is expected to increase even more with the intensifications of the counteroffensive. What do you think? What do you think is behind the surrender of Russian soldiers? Will we witness more Russian soldiers surrendering in Bakhmut? What measures will Russia take against this? What do you think about Anitin's story? Do you think Anitin will be able to return to Russia? Is there a possibility for Russia to end the war? We care about your opinions. Please share them with us.